Deus Volt, my fellow gamers. Here we've got the shiny new toys that uh, were actually bothering me in my case the other day. That's why we're taking a little break from our uh, journey of painting the nameless for Dead Zone. <coughs> Pardon. Uh, so let me just show you. With this guy here, I've got all my chipping effects done and whatnot, my highlighting for the black, and he's still actually not done. Uh, what I did is I hit the pause button, which is basically, you take a model that you have a lot done with, and you spray him down with dull coat. <clears throat> so, and I did this for a few reasons. Number one, I hold the base, and there's a lot here painted, but it wants to rub off, uh, especially on this, this gray here where my fingers are passing by as I'm as I'm painting or working on this main model. And the it doesn't really show up at all, actually. But the bottom edges, some of his bags, especially right there. Let's get the old pointer here. <clears throat> especially right there on that corner of the bag uh, has rubbed off. But that's okay because those are all highlight spots. And I'll come through and actually with these guys what I do instead of edge highlighting or dry brushing or anything like that is with this particular with the green and the browns and whatnot they like a nice earth tone uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit them with a sand color and it's nice and bright and it will uniform all this model and for some reason the the this uh, this type of green, this, this darker earthy type green, really loves a yellow, a light yellow, uh, or a, a kind of a an earth tone yellow, not a bright super like sunshine happy, but it likes that uh, earth tone uh, yellow. And I also have to go through here, and this little piece right there, I need to paint bronze or brass because I did that on that side. So that's what I will. Uh, I'll do here as well. Um, you know, you've got a, a multi-piece model. You got a lot of stuff going on. You have to go back and forth and and double check between the two sides, making sure that you have everything right. Uh, and this this is a very plain base. This is all gray, basically, with a little bit of metal thrown in there. What I'm going to do is you know, add some brick color in there, and of course some tufts. And what I'll do as well is I might glue in. A little bit of ballast we'll see what I feel like because this is pretty textured pretty well textured but here like these little sandwich pieces you know one part I'm gonna make black to look like asphalt maybe even paint like a white stripe on it uh, but yeah I'm definitely on the top there you can see those brick like pieces we're gonna paint those brick but I wanted to hit that pause button and get this guy to where I can touch him without rubbing off anything and continue work and that's an excellent trick is hitting it with the tester's dull coat that gives them that coat of protection so when you handle them why not it's not going to affect them uh, this guy's looking pretty gnarly right now but you know this is what i do to all my uscr models uh, and you know the chipping effect we'll probably go over that in, in another video tons of videos out there for it but mine's really very simple and it's time consuming but it makes the model look pretty sweet but the subject of today's video is going to be this cat right here <clears throat> you can see a large difference between detail this guy looks like a tonka toy and this guy looks you know pretty robust and detailed and whatnot well we're going to go over inking here uh, I've brought this model to a base coat that is solid and uh, it is complete. There's no gaps or anything like that. This base coat is very, very nice. So you might think, man, that's a lot of open green. But that open green allows me to add that chipping effect, which uh, really takes that space and minimizes it. It's, it's a wonderful deal. But here, I just wanted to show you guys the difference. If you guys don't wash, 
you're missing the magic, okay? So here, we're gonna take this model, we're gonna wash it. And I haven't done a few things. I haven't done the highlighting of any of the black stuff. I haven't added like the little streak of orange that really highlights his visor there. And I haven't added the chipping effects. <clears throat> Pardon. I do that after the wash because you don't want to wash out your, your highlights. Uh, that's one of the top coat, the finishing pieces. And you don't want to wash out your chipping effects. You don't want to unify that. You want the chipping effects to pop. So it's all about layering. And right here is the basic layer. This is the base coat. So this is what you're going to go with. I always do base coat, then do the wash, highlight, chipping, all that good stuff, all after it. So for me, it's like a three-stage deal, not counting cleaning, priming, and then the dull coat afterward. So here, we're actually going to go for it. I just use this mess. Now everybody talks about it. I need more. Uh, I might want to go to Luke's apps look back up his video for making this because where it is a good substance gw charges far too much for this mess i mean one little one little bottle like ten dollars all right this giant bottle of black which i've used on several successive miniatures through several different lines through several different fads of my miniature purchasing and whatnot this bottle was 99 cents like come on man now, I do use this a bit, so uh, it's a very good product. I highly suggest, you know, if you, do, if you guys don't want to make your own, go ahead and buy it. But I'm telling you, if you make your own, you're going to spend a lot less. <clears throat> and I've just been using up what I have. So here, I'm going to use a large brush. Soak up this stuff. And what I do, see, the bristles are going to be stiff initially. Um, I, I store my brushes. Let me just show you. I store my brushes either straight up and down, which is how I, I prefer to do it, or laying down. The ones that I use the most, I'll put here next to me. But they won't stay here. They'll go up into the cup uh, if I'm cleaning and whatnot because I don't want debris on the brush tips. Take good care of your brushes. They'll last forever or a similarity thereof. So anyway, when the brushes are dry, stay there for a little while, I put mine in my mouth and get it moistened, get it... Uh... And what I'm doing, I'll, I'll load the brush and you tap it and get that excess off. Because when you're washing, you don't want stuff to pool. Okay, this is strange, but... What I'm going to do is just, and you want to, you know, you could do the capillary action thing if you want to. And sometimes it's okay if it globs up a little bit because what you're going to do is, especially an area that you're going to highlight back up you'll uh, highlight right over any of the gloppages like this concrete piece here I'm going to go back over it don't know how this is turning out on camera because I'm actually looking at the model um, one thing you don't want is pooling you can there's a few things you can do with that you can have a napkin handy soak it up because napkins are quite absorbent you can soak up that pooling or what I tend to do because it's easier is I will take the brush clean it off real quick that adds a lot of excess moisture to the brush and whatnot and you can kind of soak it up that way all right so the base is pretty well done here um, 
And if you notice, I was doing it in sections. You want to do it in sections, focus on the sections. And that way you don't get this creepy line of like dried uh, earth wash or wash period on it. And then another line. So you want a smooth surface. You don't want anything that kind of looks like that. You want it to be smooth and you don't want anything to pool. Pick it up with your brush and move it about. Always move this stuff about and go in sections. Okay. You don't want don't want any pooling. And you kind of want to take it up with your brush and move it. Move it around. And the best way to move it around is to keep applying it. And that way the brush kind of it like runs out of earth washer, whatever washer you're using. And it will enable you to drag excess wash with you because the brush will, uh, will pick up that extra wash in its bristles since you're you're constantly using the wash off the bristles if that makes sense if you're using it it's easy to pull around and this really is like bringing the miniature to life all these details pop really makes it look quite nice. Hmm. <clears throat> my goodness, I've got a frog in my throat and it doesn't want to leap the heck out out of here. Like, bro, get away from me. Okay. Concentrate on black because the black portion doesn't need any kind of wash because the wash isn't really going to show up, especially when you uh, dull coat it. Since a wash is gloss, the dull coat brings it right down. And over a black surface, it's just not going to show up. So I'll hit little bits of the the black on accident, definitely not on purpose. Uh, it just doesn't do anything for the black sections. That will come later with a controlled highlight. And this is just adding shadows, recesses. It's a very, very quick process, but don't be in too big of a hurry. Like I said, you want to control this wash, move it where you want it, and don't let it pool. Uh, that's probably the worst thing. You know, you'll see these, these items on eBay or coolminiornot.com saying that they were professionally painted and they've got pools all over them. It's like, bro, you're insulting my eyes. <clears throat> and, you know, I understand people getting into the hobby. Allowing it to pool. But don't go on a professional, semi-professional website and say this stuff is pro-painted. And don't try to sell your stuff as pro painted if it's not. Uh, yeah. You're trying to charge that premium. You're trying to get that commission fee. And yeah, you're just not a pro if you're pooling. And especially if you don't clean your models, man. 
clean your, your freaking models, guys. And I love it. I'll call people out on that. I'm not cleaning their models and they'll tell me it's a... It's the angle of the camera, man. That's why you see that giant mold line in the front. It's like, okay, dude. It's the camera angle. You're so right. What was I thinking? Couldn't be that you're a lazy piece of poop and didn't clean your model. <clears throat> and small sections like what's going on in that hand that's fine that's not pooling and I'm gonna leave it like that because after I hit it with this little bit of the the yellow uh, mud color from Tamiya it's gonna look boss and it'll have a depth to it and also if you're doing a chipping effect on these models um, in the area that, that pulled up or you made a mistake on, you have a bit more wash than what you want, you can just cover it up with a chip. Just well, kind of, not cover it up, just paint right over it with the, with the chipping effects. Hmm. Do his his happy little arm here, channeling my Bob Ross, yo. Okay. Alrighty then. Get some of those. See, you want to pull in those recesses. Don't let it. You master this this wash. Don't let it pull into those recesses. Okay. Like I said, if it's pooled a little bit, it's going to have a lot of liquid in there. It's not going to dry as fast. So what you can do is you can take your, your paintbrush, use up the paint that's in the bristles, and then go back, and you literally can grab it with the bristles. Grab that pool and move that pool around. cables <laughs> uh, I don't even know why people sculpt those on the models they're, they're, they don't even look cool like how comfortable is that uh. take that pool see that and I'm gonna take away get out of here pool don't want you here And it's easy. Just move it around. <clears throat> yeah, see on his chest plate there, there's a bit right there. But that's a prime candidate for some chipping. And see, sometimes if you, you know, slather this stuff on, uh, you just can't help but the pool. But you should have known better than to slather it. Okay, so that didn't take too terrible long. The video is still very short. <clears throat> Always rinse your brush. I'm rubbing it up against the side of the cup. A few taps. And rub it. Uh, here, I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. And then you rub it flat and you know in a circular motion like you're twisting it keep that point as sharp as you can and then from this stage you see how it's kind of out let's move this 
<clears throat> All I did was I put it in my mouth and with my tongue and lips and whatnot, straighten that point out. And you want to leave it to dry like that. And that conserves your tips. <clears throat> this is, this water looks fairly gruesome, but it's actually fairly clean. I've only done a little bit with this. And, you know, tonight I'll change the water again. But here's my little dude. I've got all the grid work finally detailed. All the, the details have popped. And, and now he's very, very shiny. Okay, very different from this guy. Because he's been hit with dull coat. He has not. Remember, your, your washes are mostly going to be gloss. <clears throat> and that's... Um, Mostly due to the 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 vehicle, the the fluid system that is used to seek this pigment into the crevices, but all of his details are popped. Uh, he's looking pretty grubbly. He wants to get some, and he will get some details here soon. So the detail part it takes a lot more time. And putting on some wash so uh, I'll probably just uh, do the details and I can show you guys later or, or whatever what have you uh, or I'll just have him completely done and I don't know I want to do a chipping tutorial so maybe I'll do that anyway so this is a fun little walk through this I might I might show you guys how to fully paint him I'm not sure but pretty cool little dude so far and we will uh we'll continue our little painting tutorials here soon all right you guys take it easy carry a laser